Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. Are we, are we live? Are we doing this? We're here. We're back. Hello, everyone out there in TV land on the Twitch stream tonight. We are episode seven of Dice Wise Entertainment presents the Age of Ashes Adventure Path, sponsored by Fantasy Grounds. We are using their platform. You are getting a DM view, so you actually get to see how it kind of works and how to use it as we are learning ourselves. But do not fear. Rob Hammond can't be with us tonight, so I have a new trigger man. Please say hello to Superfan turned Jarrett the intern turned DM in his own right. You can actually see him on our Sunday night show at twitch.tv forward slash GM's cut, where we are running the Simply Second Edition podcast and live stream. And we are running around in Jared Mercer's world, the world of Rotram. Did I say that right? Did I say that right, Jared? Close enough. Oh, close enough. <laughs> there he is. Rutran. Sorry, Rutran? Rutran. You'll, you'll yes. have to like you have to put it in the chat here to spell and then uh, I don't know. Just put it right in the in, in the chat window for everyone that to could see. Be the wrong pronounce pronunciation. Let's just say I've been okay. playing around with the lettering. Well, I I've got you on a video, it's tagged on our YouTube channel, and it's up there with the terrible spelling who's responsible for that but we'll move on yeah. also of course in the house my resident rules lawyer why because while i'm reading and trying to run this podcasting network i read the monsters i read the adventure but what's evil damage what's shoddy armor what 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 well he doesn't have a character to play at the moment i kind of knocked him out after a bucket brigade but he's still a valuable member of our team mr joe gibson is in the house tonight hello hello did you get the emails I sent you? Did you? Are you ready? Yeah, ready, so I, ready to I, back I got me? that lovely little <laughs> chain. My phone was just fucking almost on fire. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> All right. So, gentlemen, um, switching us over to appropriate background, though I do like the Celtic wheel that you guys got going there, or this is fine. Um, where did we leave off? Well, we're going to start with our cast of characters um we have playing a rare breed sure he loves beer all, all dwarves do but elbrick stone chugger the dwarven sorcerer running off of charisma now if you don't know charisma is not a big stat build for a dwarf so taking the handicap taking one for the team trying to be amusing and probably one of our top scottish accents mr matt witt is in the house <laughs> top scottish sometimes hello everybody uh running running a close second in the in the world of sky I, I gotta ask like is anybody actually here scottish besides like my one quarter ancestry anyone I, i'm a half scott oh, are you i am okay comes natural to you then half german half scottish oh cool do you want to know else comes natural to me Beer. besides your besides your <laughs> <laughs> Beer. okay um i i find the ancestry tree interesting i do you know we're canada and u.s and some melting pot sure but i just i do find that kind of interesting in the different cultures so moving on um not that this is a competition you know but uh you know ranking a close second close second with a scottish accent we have returning from his absence uh mr frank hamilton playing theowen of no apparent last name what clan are you from theowen um you know we haven't really much talked about clans <clears throat> and all that you have a big big dwarven last name for us to uh do i have one you know that's a that's a great idea but my my full name is Dion, son of dorn crossed hammers fireproof and fearsome so my clan would be crossed hammers oh, okay cool can work with that very cool yes I like it, and you have now. You did you did talk about the crossed hammers on your uh, clan dagger. We were getting into yep. clan daggers, and everyone's got their little symbol on there. You were talking about crossed hammers. I remember that. Yep. The man who has more chest hair than he knows what to do with, wafting in the wind, even when there's no breeze. Think about it. Does he have mental control? Miros. I want to say the fresh maker, um, but I'm looking at the name here, and it's kind of like A N V dot dot Anvil Bender, Anvil Breaker. Anti something. Ryan Messina's in the house tonight. We'll just go with that. Hello, hello. Yes. Always glad to be around and making Jeff get tongue tied on little words like my last name. Common is fun. It is. 
is the funnest. So uh, not with us this evening, um, couldn't be here. We have Jared, thank you again for stepping in and being my trigger man and watching and monitoring our chat as uh, Merciless Mercer. Is that uh, what you got going on in case so people know who you are? The Merciless one? Crafty uh, Mercer. Cra uh, crafty. Merciless. That's Cra only my DM handle, Merciless. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, also not with us tonight, um, Dice Wise Entertainment's executive producer, Cheryl Ball, is not with us this evening. And we have, uh, fortunately, a, a story split where last time the arsonist, Calmont, was confirmed. He blabbed a whole bunch of stuff under some mild interrogation where we used too much rope. They took him home, half the party, and half the party stayed. Why? Because there's no way Dahlgren, true seeker, was going to leave when he heard or thought or spilled too much lore about not an elf gate, but elf gates, plural. Switching to Dwarven now for all of this chatting in front of the goblins who are quite grateful, but they're still blocked out of their home. One Dolgan True Seeker, Miros Anvilbender, Albrick Stone Chucker spend the night planning. Theon escaping, sorry, <clears throat> escorting the arsonist home with Mera of Desna. They turned him over to the temple, which promptly turned him over to the guards. So drawing your attention to the map here, gentlemen, just double clicking on the sharing here. You all see the map. Yep. The great dream house number six on the left side, the west side of the map, big roundish building. Is where, is, our, our, where, is where our halfling has gone and staying the night. Theoen, did you want to just turn back around and trug, trudge up the hill for two miles in the middle of the night in the dark, join your guys on the hill, or did you want to find other accommodation? Well, I'm not much one for staying around, when, especially when there's things exciting to do out there. Uh, I'd be okay for traveling at night. I can see in the dark as well as any dwarf. Okay. Uh, you're willing to risk uh, random encounters because I'm pretty sure like they're secure on the hill. And if you wanted to spend a night at Cadence Keg or something and just got up really early and got out there at a decent time on your own, day is safer than night. But like you said, if you can see in the dark and other things can't, besides smell you, if you take your chances, sure. Let's see. Um, well, if I stick around until morning, there's 10 gold waiting for me. Oh, that's right. How much did we offer to pay you to bring in? You guys want to get the... Yeah. Oh, no, I, I know exactly how much was offered. That'd be 10 gold. And we've made contact with goblins. I believe that's 20. Yes. Was it a head or was it total? No, I, I think, think that was, was... I think that was 20 per goblin. No, I think we've that talk, was... 20. We've talked to them all. We, we talked about the gold pay, pay, piece inflation and how everything's silver now. So that's like 200, you know, ye old gold is it's worth like 200 gold so i think they you know want to give you anyway it's late so do you want to stay and try and find the council in their burned down building in the morning try to contact uh the council members as it were get your payment or do you want to just sit on well, that for now i think we can just sit on that for now that money is as good as in the bank sure oh yeah so let's let's get me trotting back across the wilderness there in the dark and night back to back to our new home. Random encounters in the middle of the night. There's nothing more dangerous than a dwarf over short distances, so I'm fairly confident. Aha! I like it. I like it a lot. Well, neat feature here. If we right click on the D10, you'll see just like anything else. I want to roll two, or want to four, or want to roll twenty, but there's a percentage. <gasps> Let's click on percentage and see them hover. I've changed my dice to a nice smoky gray. The world of ash is upon us. Toss those in here. 17. Ooh, that sounds pretty low. It I, does. I think something, you know, might actually beset you in the middle of the night. Can I have, as you're traveling in exploration mode, trying to find your way back to a spot in the middle of the night, 
I don't think there's a road, but there's got to be some kind of beaten path. I mean, it was a back and forth. You know, they obviously used the town. Now, they had they were secure. They could take supplies right from Cheliax. They didn't even have to, like, use the town. No, to sure. be honest, though, Jeff, um, I'm just going to say he could probably hear us from town. <laughs> yeah right there's instead of smoke there's like a, a big we are celebrating dwarven <laughs> shadow puppet party going on as they set half the hill ablaze yeah no kidding they, they talk about dwarven night okay. vision so you got your... about dwarven echolocation <laughs> you've got your beacon feeling i'll give them that with a perception peon you got i got a 21 perception you sense something oh, right. you think you, hear, you, you think you hear something and at edge of your dark vision you believe you see movement A, i'll take me axe out and i'll say in common well if you're so eager to die come at me i don't have all day to kill you i've well, got things to do. stealth is an option if this is a creature and you're upwind as opposed to downwind or downwind as opposed to upwind as it, as it were, you know, you might just... I've just used me dwarven stealth. Oh, okay. I've called it out. <laughs> All right. <so. laughs> it's anti-stealth. You got like the wind holes in your axe and you just twirl it over your head, making that... You know, just, just in case you didn't know where I was. All right. The movement stops. Uh, oh, shit. And two green eyes regard you in the night reflecting in the pale pale moonlight and a low growl is your response what do you do oh, oh i'll growl back and prepare to <laughs> chop it okay intimidation <laughs> i can growl do beastie all right intimidation let's see yep let's let's give it a roll hi yeah 20 it leaves. Bye. <laughs> Gone. There you go. Um, well now, played, sir. Well played. <laughs> well, there's a thing about combat encounter mode is you can actually have that before combat is certain. Uh, just how we kind of screwed up the initial hostage situation in encounter exploration mode. Uh, exploration mode. Um, Theo and might have cowed, you know, something. So maybe Frank feels a little better. Now, I didn't force this. He had the option to stay. I actually brought it up. He didn't have to call out to it. He had the option for stealth. Yeah, right. Well, that's a dwarf. I did. And he did make the roll. So I don't want anybody thinking this crap is scripted. Okay. No, 20 just, on just gave him. Yeah, no, I gave him options. I got, I got, okay. a, I got a plus he has two. He's a low growl and he's like, Rawr! Yeah, I know. He just <laughs> pulls out his, he's got his megaphone horn just to <laughs> amplify. <laughs> Starts running in the forest, chopping down a tree while angrily looking at the eyes. Yeah, really, just comes at him swinging and uh, making a bunch of noise. And I'll I'll give my axe a nod, and then trot on. <laughs> <laughs> Is it so shiny you see a reflection, mistaking that there's a dwarf in there? Or dwarf ah! <laughs> that's a second devastatingly handsome dwarf I see. Oh, that's just me, the Owen, the unabashedly <laughs> handsome, and trot along. All right, so. In the middle of the night, does anyone go walking in their sleep? You've partied. You're fearless celibate. first level dwarf. <laughs> yeah, we did you a bit. Switching to, switching to the campsite. In the middle of the night, boys, do you go walking in your sleep? Have you guys uh, got to the point of, uh, you know, full consumption? I'm um, hitting me books. Are you now? Because I would love to have Joe look up fatigue and exhaustion for tomorrow's encounters. That would be awesome. Why don't you get right on that, Joe? <laughs> I can do that. Rest in, <laughs> relax, and doing right. the huge. Okay, so a little bit of party with the goblins. They get out of hand. Like if you guys brought booze, you know they will drink, eat, snack, dance. You know. If we brought booze, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were here to make booze. And do you have the any on your person? Thing. It takes it, booze to make booze, and that's the truth. It implies that we're dry. Yeah, you could go just scrape off some mushrooms and ring them out, you know. Survival. It's in that supplement uh, ruling. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Yeah, no kidding. Roasting mushrooms and uh, drinking ale. Dolgren does his 
you know, interpretive dance and tells the story. Interpretive of, dance. He, no, he, 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 <laughs> don't, dwarfin, don't dwarfin interpretive dance. Think about that for a second. Is that not the most brilliant thing ever? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. He tells you the story about a halfling cavalier, not ye two years back, who worked for a um, Taldian uh, disgraced noble trying to reclaim his family name. And when coming upon um, a tree that actually spoke and had 200 year old information for them, um, the ever prepared halfling who has a cavalier skill set, which apparently is only riding nobility and diplomacy, breached the gap and translated by digging deep into his training, pulling Sylvan out of nowhere and doing said interpretive dance. And maybe I've roasted too many mushrooms. Maybe Dahlgren has drank too much of your sweet ale. But he will now show you this dance. And that's what he's doing, Theon, when you come upon them in the middle of the night. You've got Al just kind of leaning back, reading his books, you know, smiling on at Dahlgren. Miros, what are you doing while this is going on? The goblins are into it. They're like circle chanting Dahlgren. Yeah, yeah, take it off. Um, I had a <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Sorry, oh. no one speaks goblin. That was for the audience. I walk over to Albrecht. He looks touched, Albrecht. Remember our one cousin, Corey. He reminds me of him, touched. Aye. But sometimes the best of us are. Aye. But I mean, he's really touched. I mean, laddie, just now this afternoon, you were dangling an unconscious halfling off of the tower using him as a marionette. I was having fun, and I was also getting my gains. That's what you look. Doing. Look at this. See that? It's my quad. It's never popped like that before. I need to push more halflings off of cliffs. <laughs> and he's wondering why we're two players short tonight. They're just like, no. He's too crazy. <laughs> he's crazy. He's touched. See to your mead. Leave me to my books. Hey, you look like me a halfling to dangle off a cliff. You think two goblins would be about the same weight as a halfling? I don't know. Ask them. Hey, you two wee ones, come here. Murrows has a question for you. Yes, sir. No, he asked hey. me. No, he asked you. No, he asked ah. us. What do you want? <laughs> come here. I need to go test me something there. Sure, in the sure. name of science. Yeah. And in, in the name of Theon. I don't see straight right now. I, uh, yeah. No. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Hero guy. All thank right. You, Hold this you. rope. We go to Rusa. Thank you for. <laughs> Leaving us all over your boots. I don't think they can handle your ale. That's okay. Just get away from Halbrick. If you get down to his books, he'll do something fiercer to you than I'll ever do. All right. So you give him a rope to hang on to. Yeah, he does. Well, if you didn't want to segue at that, I can get very descriptive about what, as what we do. Knock yourself out. I'll give you one night of how we spend our time, downtime, you guys are going to spend so much downtime like doing actual work in Breach Hill and stuff. You guys, first night, first adventure, put out the fire, save the goblins. It's party time. It's camp. You're away from people. No one can see your weird fetishes and stuff. No, I'd say go for it. We won't spend too much time on this. All right. I, I would like to lasso both of them together while then climbing up into the parapets and then dangle them off of it and use them as a weight. I'll lower them and then I'll raise them and then I'll lower them and then I'll raise them. So you're going to climb back up onto the parapet or just get in the front door and get them to follow you all the way back up there. Okay. I got to get my, have to get my gain somehow. Okay. They lose a lot of weight through retching. I'll give you that. Okay. Uh, that's why I brought two. Okay. So Theon, a bunch of goblins. Um, Meros is missing. The goblins are slightly fewer. One's dancing. One's reading. Everyone's having a good time without you. I think you made the right decision. And, no. he, pass, and he passes out from a force march. No. What, uh, <laughs> what do you want to do with you? As I, I look around, I'll point at uh, the old soothsayer. I don't know who you're trying to court with that dance, but it's unsightly. Stop it. And as the other one tries to uh, make off with a bunch of goblins, well, maybe it's working for him. What do I know? But I know one thing. <laughs> I've I've traipsed across the the boonies to get back here, hoping there'd be something's going on. It looks like you're up to no good, wasting me beer or our beer. It's all mine anyway. 
wasting our beer on goblins? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I should shake my head or walk away. I'll tell you this, Theon, okay? Uh, with the elven border of Keon, right north of the Five King Mountains, where you're from, okay? Uh -huh. you, you don't speak Sylvan, I am assuming? I speak Dwarven, that's close enough. True, okay, so, right. Um, you don't speak Sylvan, but there's a learning center nearby in Keon, and you recognize <laughs> Sylvan. See where I'm going with this? That. Thank you, that's thank you. Terrible. I know. Oh. I've been sitting on that for months. Oh. Um, you recognize Sylvan when it's being portrayed. And like I said, while you're contemplating, Dahlgren is literally saying, and he's doing this impression, and you don't know what the hell the story's about because he starts talking about a, a Taishan guy, and he's like, and then the three said, I didn't ask for your life story, Sonny. I just wanted to know why you're here. And then he flips around as if somebody else was translating. And then the tree says, common is fun. Get it? Anyway, the goblins who've been paying rapt attention just fall over freaking laughing and killing themselves. And thank you, I'm here all week. You know, and he slaps his mm -hmm. Haha, job well done, entertained, and, you know, sees you. Oh, yes, yeah, I, I, uh, I got to get into doing Rob now. I got to do like a player a week. I did you great last week frank by the way if i do say so did i not do a great frank last week good job good job no, not really <laughs> i'll probably do a, a worse rob so anyway um <clears throat> get into the old man dwarf here oh theowen now there you are made it back in one piece in the middle of the night that's impressive so since we're all speaking dwarven and really loudly you know um did you get uh you get squared away I, I dropped the halfling off and just made my way back here. I figured any monies that were owed is pretty safe and sound back there. Oh, Goodest money in the yeah. no, you can trust the council. Uh, yeah, no, their their word is gold. It'll sit there nice and safe with us traipsing around out here. Um, where's the halfling? The cleric. Oh, she wasn't a much up to traipsing across the, the uh, boonies there at night, so she elected to stay back. You know, do the priestly things, sleep, you know, what they've got to do, and pray to their gods, whatnot. Mm. Well, I have a little bit of uh, a little bit of healing magic in me, so I suppose I'll schlep myself along since uh, you guys have, uh, um, you know, finished. Well, she didn't really have obligation, now that I think of it. She answered the call to heroes with us. We met her in the tavern at the Wizard's Grace. She answered the call of heroes, and she agreed to bring back the goblins safe and sound if if they were found such and uh the arsonist when we found out about him so i guess her obligation is filled this is good this is good we could find out quite a bit in her absence yes i like this good night and he just falls over and sleeps right there hey <laughs> that's a, that's a good thing i'll look to uh okay all bright how do we sit on uh the defenses Speaking of which, do you know what amphitheater is? Yes. Do you know how it works? Big, big yeah. stone wall. So Theo and you hear shrieking. Yeah, we like this ride. Blech. No, we don't like this ride. Let us down. Yeah, we like this ride. Blech. No, we don't like this ride. Let us down. Just echoing through the night, coming off oh. of a parapet wall. <laughs> There's your defense right there. Blech, Blech. They haven't... Albrecht slams the book shut in front of him. That's about enough of that. And I stand up. I'll be right back. Help yourself to the keg I got tucked in the corner there. Nodding to Theon. And I trudge up towards the keep. Muros! Hey, one more! 278! <sighs> Damn it, laddie. Four. Wait, I can't get... Just let me get two more in. I'm about done. 299! Oh, yeah, right. Two of them are about the same weight as a halfling. You're doing curl I mean, reps. You're doing curl reps with these guys. Is that? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Three hundred. Oh, there you go. Abrick, you got to catch these little tossers here before I let them go. Or you want me to bring them up? I ain't catching nothing, laddie. 
Hey, get hey. your buns down to the camp. We've got to get to sleep. We've got lots of exploring to do here tomorrow. All right, all right. You don't need to get yourself out of worked up until little buns. Eh? No, like someone took a page out of your book and used it there for the tosser. Plus, laddie, the Owen's back at camp. The Owen's back. The Owen. Hey, <laughs> you little villains, get your horses up here. Eh? I need to get down there. The Owen's here. Time to get some good drinking on. And I'll just turn and head back to camp. Okay. So uh, after all this settles down and you guys, Meros, you come down with the goblins, or you just yeah. leave them tied up here overnight? No, nah, no, nah, I take them down. I'm losing them. You, you did good. You're not truly happening there. You lost. You got a lot lighter halfway through. You, but, unti uh, you untie them, they pass out right there on the ground. Just dizzy hey. as hell. Uh, look at the wee little devils. Wait, and the more drinking. Okay. So you drink the night away. Dahlgren's I toddle off to Theo and Theo and Hey, there you are. What, <laughs> hey. what foolishness have you got going on up there? I hear you yammering about. Not foolishness, just us there. Just working on my peak physical perfection is all. That's it. Don't be a little jealous there just because I'm more of a peak specimen than you are. Uh, you're just jealous because Ma likes me best. Oh. Always trying to make up for it. Uh, she always picked the wee one for her favorite. <laughs> well... I would suggest a moderate amount of drinking and we nail some doors shut and hunker down. I don't want something creeping up on us in the middle of the night and bite me on the arse. That's horrible. Set us up a, a safe camp. The goblins will take turn on watch. Rest tightly. Yep. We had set, you guys had set that up last game, so you're good. Besides all the freaking noise you're making. Dwarven stealth at its greatest. Yeah. We're establishing our radius. Should we sneak up on those dwarves? No, no, no. They sound too rangy. We'll just go this way. <laughs> sort of like an anti-stealth. <laughs> no one will stealth up on us because they, oh, no, they don't want anything on that. All right, gentlemen. With as much rest as you can muster, perhaps sleeping in a bit. I mean, you have no obligations. You know, you did what you wanted for the town. You brought back your thing. The goblins are here, just kind of looking at you half awake in the morning, rubbing their eyes, looking hopeful that you'll continue to maybe, you know, search the place or, you know, dig a hole or maybe get back in there. They talked about cultists, Frank. Cultists that chased them out of the basement. Their pet bear that the audience fondly might have once known as Firepaw has grown big. And they warn that they keep him locked up. And uh, I think there was a guy named Phil that was talking about, you know, feeding the bear and didn't go well. And, you know, but it's their mascot. Hey, well, if we stumble across it, it may well be a dead mascot. Oh, the flappy ears get sad. What? No, 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 no. We, we've kept him alive and fed him all this time. Please, if you could free him, you know, return us to him or, or you know, if you don't mind, if we leave in the basement again. You know, we, we, we could we could be we helpful. Oh, we could be very helpful. I mean, uh, um, uh, Ike and Mike there spent the whole night dangling on a rope, said it was the time of their lives. You know, when you wake up, Miros, these brave, brave goblins that you've beaten and scratched and dangled along a wall, okay, are telling the other goblins about how useful they were to you. Oh. And now, now you have, of the, you know, 12 to 20 goblins that are left, okay, you got at least eight lined up in front of you, you know, and there's, what's left of your rope is like bound and wrapped haphazardly down the line, and they all want to be helpful. <laughs> at least these eight. <laughs> I like these ones there. They got a little fire in their belly. Yeah. They've kind of ruined your rope, but. That's okay. We can get more rope. So, um, with our liaison, happy spending the night talking to the new little chieftain or whatever, the chieftain and the liaison, do you remember their names? Nope. No? Anyone? Let me check notes. <laughs> Stars ring. Greta? 
No. Calvin. No. Nope. Nope. Don't. Didn't make a note. Oh. None of your name is Stella, right? <laughs> um, going into the hell night here, hell here, as I was saying, there's little P's that mark stuff so I can, you know, if the DM happens to forget someone's name, scanning someone like um, Helba, the current goblin chief, and they actually have a couple of pictures of her, okay? This was the hostage. That's why they, the rest didn't want to make a move because it was their current leader, right? And then there's Warble, Bumble Brasher, because they are of the, you know, Bumble Brasher clan. So these two, when you guys are, you know, look like you're up and ready to go finally and re-gearing and, you know, how to wash and ate and all that stuff. The two ladies approach you and, you know, kind of ask politely, what, what, what's the plan? Can, can you help us from here? You know, would, would you escort? And um, one wants you to take their liaison back to town. You know, or if you guys don't want to do that, they'll send a small contingent of goblins to guard her and make sure that she gets back safe. What do you want to do with our goblin aid support, guys? Well, I think if we just keep you folk here and looking after things, that would probably not be a terrible idea. You all lived here. What can we expect from these uh, rooms and such? Oh, right. So um, what else lives here besides you? I'll, uh, I'll reach into my pocket and pull out the crude map that I had them draw for me and hand it over to them. Yep. They draw a very crude map of the lower levels, uh, just a very basic layout of their home and, and you know, where you could find their mascot and, and some basic stuff about the actual upper levels. And it's mm -hmm. just a bunch of elongated rooms and they're like um, straw men, you know, in this big open area or, or you know, bad, bad mojo in this room with black tiles, you know. Um, and a whole bunch of, well, we don't go here. And, you know, you know, they're, they're taking, it looks like the upper levels are taking very big, broad guesses, whereas the lower levels, their home is a little bit more detailed. So they live in a castle, yet they don't wander about the ground level? Nope. Nope. See, they're, 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 just, ha they're happy in the dungeon. There's something just not right in the head with goblins. They, so we've got. We've got two choices. We can either pacify this level here ahead of us, or we can go down deeper. I, I'd be keen to make sure that there's nothing coming up to bite me in the buttocks. And that's why I like you. Even, I, even keeled and sound of thought, I too. I'm I liking that. Touching my buttocks without my permission. I'll follow your leads, lads. You know I, I leave just the fighting stuffs to you. I just, I just don't want to get halfway here. downstairs and have something crawl up behind like Albright was saying and bite us on the ass. All right, Dion. I guess it's for a classic game of stones, parchment, and knife. Who goes first? No, I'll go first. <laughs> I, I do have the classic uh, rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock dice here if anyone wants to have a go. Otherwise, you can sort it out amongst yourselves. All right, Dion wants to take the bravado. That's fine. I need a good I need a good springboard to get my lift off when I get in. Well, we might as well knock the dust off this armor sooner or later, right? <laughs> whap, whap, whap. Right. Yeah. So shout out to Matt Bell, who sent us an email very respectively and kindly, and to whom it may concernly, about shoddy armor and how we screwed that up. Joe? Let's hear let's hear about shoddy armor. Let's hear about ready? how you're you AC. There, Frank? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, no longer the tank. Yes. Or, you know. Shoddy let's armor, it's like equivalent to plus five. No. Oh. <laughs> Be nice, but no. No, uh shoddy armor, which I guess somebody forgot to state that it was shoddy armor. So I stated it was shoddy. You guys were like, oh, well, okay. does it have the broken condition? I went, no, it just says shoddy. Okay. So, anyways, for shoddy armor. Your lovely armor takes a minus two penalty to its AC. 
and <laughs> we, we will go into we will go into his character now and make these corrections immediately. Yeah. <laughs> so does that make it worse than the scale I had on earlier? Probably. Uh, I don't know. Like, didn't the AC of this stuff like it was plate, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like even crappy plates got to be better than just scale. I'm thinking, I'm hoping. But then you also <laughs> the the actual one that kick in the can is the armor check penalty is also increased by two. Oh, that's right out. Yeah. So instead that of your, okay, so instead of a plus six AC, it's only plus four. Instead of a regular negative three check penalty, it's negative five. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my scale back on in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And sadly enough, uh, with shoddy armor, there is no value if you want to try and sell it. At least you can fake well, I it. I can. I can fix it. Yeah, what, what about repairing it? Yep, you can always do repairs on your off time. It's just based on yeah. your DC. If you have the, the appropriate craft skill. So. Yeah, so the scale that I had was a plus three armor bonus. Oh, well, it's better because so it's plus four. The same. Yep, so it'd be one pip better. Uh, the movement penalty is not as heinous. What is Bulwark? Bulwark has that um, reflex thing, right? Where you can just turtle up. I think we were talking about it last time. Yeah. It's up to you. You know what? You know what? I'm going to keep it. All right. Awesome. I'm going to keep it. So allow me to modify your armor right here, right now. Please do so. Uh, I've made the decision to be turtle. I'm going to go full turtle. Right. So I can unlock with the little symbol at the top here. There's an unlock. I can unlock and we can adjust his armor. So it's plus four now. Um, the AC special bonus isn't there. Dex modifying cap uh, is at zero. It's a negative five. Whoops, not plus 35. Negative five. There we go. Uh, the speed penalty. Now, what did we talk about the speed penalty? Uh, because I make the I match the strength needed to wear the armor. Yeah. That speed penalty is cut in half, so I'm still I believe at minus five feet per round. Okay, so I've got negative ten on the armor. Is that wrong? Is it only negative five? It Does... should only be negative five. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's something we didn't think to mod last time, but we'll we'll fix that now. Um... Uh, I just kind of took it off the top and just moved fifteen around. I yeah, I guess I guess it's it's in there. Like it's the strength has eighteen, which you've done. So, uh, what else we got here? Craft requirements, frequency activation, uh, use price traits as bulwark, which we talked about. Um, yeah, uh, in notes here, I'm gonna say this is uh, shoddy. Shoddy. Hell night. Right cobbled armor because you literally put all kinds of different pieces together it's not a single suit that like rusted it's all kinds of different and, you know and didn't that hell knight armor give me some kind of a situational bonus i forget exactly now yeah the bulwark thing uh joe no 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 it was like a bonus to well, a skill he could like he could use it to uh to convince somebody that he was oh, a hell knight yeah. it gave him a bonus oh right yeah it gives you a plus two for any non hell knight like no like you know like yeah <clears throat> someone not affiliated or know that knows much about the order that that sounds fairly illegal though <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> probably, i probably wouldn't do that i don't know you're in rome i mean this is the citadel Eldrain wearing hell knight armor or do as the romans yeah, yeah. Po could possibly use it to intimidate some people uh, to, into running away rather than having yeah. to fight them now if you I, mean, I mean what i what i might do is do it through Impl in, you know implying it who do you think i am you know pointing at the crest the castle behind me never come out and say i am a hell knight because that's that's lying and yeah know. that's correct. that's true he's that, brutally that honest and hurts feelings but at least that's the truth true. comes out of feeling i'll give you that um i'm fine either way because like i said if you run into somebody that knows what's what this might be insulting and fun role play if you run into somebody that has no idea and you guys go, I'm Umlo, then this could play out hilarious either way. So I'm down, you know, like, 
I'm sorry. I'm not trying to influence your decision, Frank. Yeah. Let that be stated. No, no. I'm, I am not going to claim to be a Hell Knight. Okay. It, yes. If I can twist it to make someone else think I am, All right. I'll, I'll do that. Okay. Hell no on the Hell Knight. No problem. All right, boys. The sun it's rises. actually become a Hell Knight. <laughs> First dwarven Hell Knight. Don't tempt me. So, let's get that Book of Omens, eh? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, gentlemen, morning, the Citadel awaits, the town awaits, the goblins await your decision, you know, what we can do here, guys. Uh, I will not have Dahlgren uh, offer two cents unless directly asked by your party. Personally, I think it's in our best interest to help these folks regain their home. I mean, if we leave now, it's like the job's half done. Not to I mention, agree. There's potentially something very interesting lying in wait in the depths of the catacombs. Well, here, here's a thing to ponder. We've got gold waiting for us back in town. We could hoof back that way. We could re-equip. Oh, could... sure, because there's so many merchants waiting for us in the basement of this godforsaken place. That's right. What do you we need could to re-equip buy... besides ale? I think you've just answered your own question. <laughs> and, and I beg your forgiveness. Okay. So I mean, that, I'm just throw, throwing that out there. I'm not sure. suggesting we go back. I'm just saying, hey, don't forget, we've got 20 gold waiting for us out there. That buys a lot of beer. A Not lot to of mention belly. anything we happen to stumble across in our adventures in, in the catacombs, my friend. We're not all exactly armed to the teeth. 20 gold goes a long ways for survivability. Aye. Ain't talking about armed to the teeth. Look at this. <laughs> just I just start flexing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Armed. Every way. Flexes his gums, the little biceps pop up. <laughs> you know, uh, you you know, know. <laughs> over preparation is for non dwarves. We should just go. And for the record, I'm not the only one apparently that uses old jokes from old podcasts there because uh, I, I know I've heard that before, Matt. Um, fun feature on the map here you guys are exposed to the fog of war. Now, the audience and myself can see the grayed areas that are completely blacked out from your view, and you I can sort of just make squares and reveal what i learned recently from one of david's awesome videos is if you hold the shift key you can literally draw with the cursor so i can actually draw out corners so you don't have that chipped away angle box feeling okay. so i can actually reveal the rooms uh properly now very excited about that cool um, and i'm just um kind of going back to your last room i'm assuming that's where you guys want to start or you want to knock open a brand new door somewhere you no, know, I I think it would be best to start in familiar territory. All right. So, Albright, what do you think? I'm not the brains of this outfit. Oh, I'll follow your lead, lad. All right. We got no rhyme, no reason to this. I say we, you know, leave no stone unturned, no door closed, and if it won't open, we break it. Hey, it's why I like you there, Albert. I speak my language. Well, let, let's let's be gentle and break it open doors. After all, if this is our keep, we got to furnish and repair it. I want my house looking as fancy as possible. If you get me drift, I in made a stone. And so, it, if we're starting in this we're gallery, in, we're in. Um, exploration mode so i don't think we need to like count movement we'll just move nope. at your rate nope okay however like throwing up a door and scrapping around minis or whatever i do need to there is that proverbial freeze time and there is the i'm keeping watch i'm like i'm assuming a perception over stealth is your go-to guys yeah for the encounter mode and that's what we use in case Absolutely, for yeah. exploration sorry um so you'll notice here your names are almost Right, this will help Frank not drag other people's minis around. The TH, that's you, Frank, with the red hair. Right? I see it. Oh, you go. guys have a green plate you're standing on, marking you as friendlies. You guys have a green health bar, which basically goes green. You're, you know, most of your hit points yellow, watch out, red, you know, all bad. Sucks to be you. Right. Uh, but we can switch this. We can actually give you guys, while we're taking here, 
um, you know, like, oh, let's show allies with your effects with um, just completely shut it off or a bar. Show player show ally health with a bar. Uh, and I would probably have to oh, dra okay. drag brand new minis down here. Nope, oh, that didn't work. Hmm. I see a bar. I see a bar. Do you? It's like a thermometer yeah. off to the side. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just I still have your big dot, so I must have to show it. Um, uh, here we go. It's a green thermometer. Oh, you know what? You guys probably. Oh, that's really. It takes up half your mini. Oh, I don't like that. Uh, if you guys go into settings, you could probably change these options yourself. Shut them off if you don't want to know. You know what I mean? Mm hmm So I'm going to shut them off. Um, there's a facing indicator now, but I like the idea that we're using Devon's Knights. Why? That's right. Our other sponsor. Devon Knights top down drop mini, so you can tell which way the guy is facing as opposed to using the indicator. So I'm going to shut those off. Um, but you guys should have your own, like on your own views in the settings, ways to muck things around to your own standard. If you don't, if you think this is too clustering, does that make sense? Yep. Wonderful. Okay. So let us very quickly reread the room in case there's something, cause you guys just kind of breeze through there and like, Oh, what? We hear something. Oh crap. There's a dragon. Let's run it through the room, trap the dragon. And then you guys are all like all about the courtyard. I, uh, I don't think it we'll really taken out of time. Finish the room really explore yeah as i said leave no stone unturned right now i have the pdf of the adventure as well as clicking on my little thing here right so i also have the available ability to do this put up the dm block for you guys to the north many rows of stadium style benches stands a wide dais garbage clutters what once was undoubtedly a pristine floor a small corridor near the dais leads to the west while to the north, an iron gate provides a view of the central courtyard. That's where you guys had breached. With Dahlgren just kind of watching our backs in the back corner, looking out and something popping through the doors, leaving the three of you to explore this place. So since we are here in exploration mode, can I have your standing, um, what shall we say, your standing perceptions? Sure. Mm -hmm. Certainly. A 19. 24. 15. So, does anything, do you guys are just fanning out? Like, do we have a, an order to this chaos? You guys are just kind of licking all the walls? What's, uh, the, so what's the a, dwarven way, you know? There's licking a dais, the walls, right? <laughs> yes. With like a, a, a pew or a podium on it? Right there. I want to check that bad boy out. Okay, so Miros is on the dais. What about the rest of you? Well, he moves to the dais. I'm going to move to the door. Okay. Give that door right there a, a solid listening to. Does right. the door talk to me? All right. Does it say, I have got a wee dragon on the backside of me. Don't open. Something like that. <laughs> You're snoring. Draconic snoring, right? Uh, <laughs> Albrecht. Um, I'll take a look around the room for any symbols on the walls. Okay. Uh, there, that... there is something that has symbols on it. Okay. You guys find insignia. Um, what are they called? Uh, here in Brilliant. the, it's an order of the cloth insignia. So it has the bursting star gold uh, nail insignia on a red background. Oh, the order of the nail. Yep, the the okay. actual order itself. I had it here. Whoops, not that one. That's the halfling. Hmm. That's the armor. Just clicking through my. Uh... Huh. I must have. Uh... I must have tossed it. Anyway, uh, but I should be able to. Can I put it in here? Hmm. Six of them. Cabinets. Debris. There's more in the room than the, the map, you know. Things, book but leather. Cabinets. Yeah, le leather book bindings, you know, pages strewn messily about the shelves. Whoever looted this place destroyed a lot of documents and stuff, but there are things to look at. Specifically with a symbol, you guys find um 
you know, what you would believe is the order of the nail insignia. Now you guys have lore to actually back this. I can say that uh, Dahlgren would pop up and uh, say, you know, this was a hell night keep. You know, that's likely the insignia of the order that kept it. Uh, if memory serves me, the order of the nail. They were pledged to hold back the wild. You know, they weren't big on fey creatures and the encroachment of the wild on civilization. Bit of a strange bunch. But honorable. Cool. Um, there's, okay. like I said, there's ripped up documents. There's the insignia themselves. There's six of them. Um, anyway, Albrick, are you interested in these? Um, the, the word's gone right out of my head here. Should be right in front of me, and yet. I'm looking for. It's like a banner. Like a tabard, or yeah, like a banner or a tabard, like a tabard that some of them are small, like a tabard that an actual hell knight could wear, and others are like you know like hanging on the wall. The banner. Okay. They could Take one of the could... hell knight tabards and fold it up and tuck okay. it into the bag. Okay. Theon, with an awesome twenty-four. The door is not snoring, not even draconically. Right. Um, that oh, door seems quiet. Yep. Miros. Hey. This podium faces the actual benches. So this is obviously some kind of lecture hall, possibly that would, you know, contain this and that. I mean, there's books strewn about that are all ripped up, that kind of thing. There's even a couple of uh, pages and stuff in around the actual podium itself, lying all over the place. Oh, yeah, that's the most interesting thing that I find, just the pages toss about. Yep. All right, cool. I'll pick one up. Okay. I'll take uh, a look. Uh, missing. You know what I mean? Like, if you want to make sense of this documentation, you'd have to gather quite a bit of it. I just grab one page and give it a little quick gander. Can okay. I even read it? Yeah, it's written in, uh, well, actually, does Chalaxian have an official language now? Uh, probably common which is the Taladian language, which was a former Chalaxian is actually the, the colony. So yeah, it's probably in common. All right. So it's one page kind of give me the gist of that. I read some names, just names. Just, just it's like a list. Yep. I'll grab another page on. Okay. Um, something about temporary order badges. All right. Can I have a this society check? A society check? Yep. Certainly. As you as well, Albrecht. From the both of you. I got a 12. Mm, some knightly term that the Chalaxians use doesn't make, you know, doesn't mean anything to you specifically. Albrecht, the um, one that you choose, let's say it's more portable than a banner. It's like, like an actual Talbert, right? It's a generic, you're one of us kind of symbology, you would guess. This would be given to a recruit or what the Hell Knights call an armature. As in like squire to be a knight. You know, they're low level, welcome to the knighthood, but you're not knights yet. You got to, you know, you got to pass all our tests and train like mad and learn our tenets of the knighthood and yada, yada, yada. And then eventually, if you pass our knightly test, join one of the orders, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, they, but this is their this is their uniform, as it were. You know, they would wear these. This much I can give you. This seems to be some sort of orientation room mm -hmm. where they brought the wee fledglings in. Now, I will tell you this. These have value to the knighthood. They consider them sacred. I mean, Bob's pieced together shoddy armor that was discarded, unless you like stole a guy's actual armor. They're probably not impressed. But this, you know, like this is like a badge of office, even though it's the lowest ranking, you know, to a hell knight or their order or the Asmodian culture that they worship. It has a certain value. Right. And if only in Chelyax. As I said, I'll roll it up, tuck yep. it into the bag. Mm-hmm souvenir number one there you go 
So, you hear anything fancy through that door over there, Theon? Ah, uh, this one's quiet. And I'll well, move, why don't you open the- it up and listen with your eyes? Oh, let's have a listen at all the doors before we go kicking one open and inviting danger on ours. Whoa. I don't want to have it come from two doors. You're scared of the wee dragon. Okay. I'm not scared of no dragon. All right. So next. give a listen at that door. Okay. You hear... Um, imagine sitting at your dining room table and you're reading. Or you're playing with your dollies. I don't judge. Okay. And you suddenly shunt back your chair six inches and it makes that noise on the floor. I'll hold the hand up. Hey. Even though it is furniture on stone it is one of those you know a cat an animal a person somebody just kind of shunted furniture and it makes that distinct scraping burp noise hey lads and it's pretty this loud is the- <laughs> like i didn't even need you to roll it's kind of loud i'll tap on the door laddies this is the door we want to open oh something of on time I hurry up and stack up. No. Okay. Get, Can I just get, behind, yep, behind get, get into position, boys. Sounds like yep. we're going to enter more exploration mode. Axe out. One, two, three. Yeah. Open the door. Okay. Give me a second here. I'm just having fun with my uh, whoopsie. Don't You're funny as they're whoopsie. I, mis- <laughs> I misdrew something. I don't know how to take it back. <laughs> <laughs> so much of the room. Well, then open the door, and that's what we see. Yeah, we can't see through the wall. So, oh, okay, it worked out in the end. Yay. Okay. <laughs> this dingy room, gentlemen, is littered with toppled bunk beds and broken furniture, and I do mean they make like they're stacked vertically, like a wigwam, on each other, and okay. then throw, yeah. Wait, is this shoddy furniture? Possibly. Ryan. You you need you need to get a little closer <laughs> to inspect. <laughs> Fair right, enough. right now, SWAT team, uh, SWAT team, you're also, you're in position. Don't break formation. You don't, you don't want to suffer another flashback. I uh, don't tempt me. I did Frank. We burned like <laughs> half an hour on it. It was ugly. <laughs> I move into the room. Five. Okay. Ten. Um, there's doors, two small but more private bed chambers hang open along the western and southern walls in the room center. The bed frames are stacked up on each other in some sort of fort or wigwam formation, with filthy and ripped bedding draped over the top to form its ceilings and walls. Oh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. We, uh, guys, get in here. Yeah, I want want to do like a a dramatic roll to Theo's left-hand side and kind of do like a Charlie's Angel pose. And we're (laughs) waiting for Albrecht to fill in the, the blank. Sure. I was picturing you on the left, but I don't mind uh, commissioning the art to have you on the right. <laughs> <laughs> so dramatic pause. We're yep. just waiting for the the give me force captain. To come and in. I'll stroll in. Yeah. Lean my cross my arms and lean up against the own. Yeah. <laughs> now, have you broken formation, Miros? Because that's like a half wall. Are you supposed to be lined up, or did Albert I, miss the I would cue love for to like there. a battle wedge? I'm kind of adapting. I'm trying to lean against the wall, very cool, and it's not working out for me. But I'm doing the damnedest that I can. All right. Actually, Who don't. Puts a he rolls wall, in, but he's a little too close to the wall, so he tries to do this the striking badass <laughs> pose against it, but he kind of like trips himself up over it. Yeah, yeah, to totally. Him. He puts his hand against it because it's on the angle he slides. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Bang on. All right. Hey, something. Something's in there. Something, something's in there. And it doesn't sound like we're being very stealthy. <laughs> I heard it when it's sweet. Dwarven stealth. Nope. We're just talking. We're using dwarven stealth. Yeah. I don't have to sneak up on you if you make me. <clears throat> All right. It's distasteful and dishonest to sneak up on someone and put an axe in. It's more a thing you want to hit him in the face with. Oh, okay, that, make, that makes sense. But um, I'm not beyond pushing their little tree fort over on them. Wait, wait, before you go push it over, there's, there's something I want to go do with it. Before I, you... I, whoa, 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 let's, let's stop. I'm stopping time here, okay? You guys came in. You looked around. I gave a description. 
And then you waited for like form up mode, which takes a few moments at last. So if anyone's here, you guys come tumbling in. One, now you, two, now me, three, and then more discussion. So let me get things settled here because I am bringing up the combat tracker. What I'm checking though really quick is to make sure that your perception checks are in the in there and it looks good. Things look good at the moment. Uh, I'll just uh, have uh, have good old uh, Dahlgren hold any actions and kind of placing him, uh, you know, near said bottom. So pulling up the actual pin here, digging up the encounter, the creature. What have we got? Oh, the creature. I've got. That's something. what we refers to as children. I've, I've got something. Something's in there. It's Maybe. a chair squeaker. <laughs> I hate chair squeakers. Possibly. All right. So you guys form up. Okay. Um, and you hear more movement in the fort. <laughs> as it were. And Oops. going Inner through, monologue. Go, going going through uh <laughs> going through the actual encounter now. Theowen. You know, it looks like something's getting ready in there. It could be casting a spell. It could bust out and charge you. It could just hide and whimper, whatever. But it just, that rush of adrenaline that something stirs before us hits you. And you go first with your 24. And I'm going to start some live battle music. Oh, that's nice. All right. Yeah. The Owen, you are first, sir. What do you do? Miros, you're on deck. Move up. So right there. Yep. Grab one of the support structures and I pull it out. Okay. Collapsing the blanket fort. All right. I'll have you get right in there if you don't mind. Get right in there and like dig dig deep because it's not like it's right not in the there. interior. You want to like just kind of like get that out there. Okay. So he goes in there and he starts yanking and imagine trying to clear rubble, even a cord of vcr junk and you pull the box and you yank the cord to get so far and it just gets a whole bunch of cotton tangled can i have a strength check you know this is going to pull but it's like when you pull it things shift collapse and brace and it's like just can't quite get it free you know it's a well-built fort 16. okay you give it a good yank and you pull a bed and your side of it kind of folds in mm -hmm. and the side to your right here Roll me a one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, roll me a D eight. A D eight. This thing is not so fragilely tossed together. Five. Five. Okay, so you pull the front, uh, and the whole thing kind of pulls out towards you, like the bottom, and the top mm -hmm. starts leaning back, and the back, and though it goes so far and then stops, it kind of finds brace on the sides, but the back of it tips back. It's like you took the top of the teepee and just yanked it to one side so the the back actually goes vertical and then falls over backwards and opens up where the front just leans steeply away from you. Okay, can I spend another action to go again? Yeah, well, you moved up. That's one. You gave a good yep. yank. That's two. Right. I'll give another yank. I don't know how this works. I'll do it again. Okay. Uh, 18. Okay. This time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can I have a reflex save? You pull very well. You pull it past you, and like, you know, big bed frames and stuff are going to come tumbling down around you. 11. 11. Now, what was that bulwark thing about uh, area of effect? <laughs> Joe? Oh. He's about to bury himself in bed wiring. I think, oh, oops. The, oh, yes, the, bulwark, the bulwark feature. Anyway, while this is all occurring, let's talk to Miros. Brandon. Collapsed the blanket fort. Yep. That's <laughs> unfortunately it's a little bit more rugged than you thought, and it's almost sort of like you're pulling it down, pulling it over, pulling it more, and pulling it past your balance point and might actually start falling down around you. Miros, what do you want to do? Does it look like my cousin Theo is about to kill himself in that No, no, it's just a bunch of bed stuff. It's you know, what's he gonna do? It won't hurt. Kill him. Himself. Non -le non lethal at best, unless there's something really <laughs> heavy hiding in there that like falls out. You know, we've embedded an axe oh, blade no. in the bottom of each bed rug and just falls. You know, that could be bad, but uh, anyway, no, he's having the time of his life. Look at him go. What do you want to do, Maros? <laughs> like a kid in the flower field. Yeah. Look at him go. Yeah, fell in the leaves and didn't know the bottom was all murky. Oh crap! 
<laughs> That's the kind of reaction you got going on, I'm, I'm guessing, you know. Annoying, but not terribly dangerous. Oh, well, that's the case. I see what he's trying to do there. So there, there's a blanket kind of draped over the center. There's all kinds of rags and you know, oh, like, it's like a, it's like yeah, okay, yeah. it's a big. They made a fort oh. out of beds, and then they dropped a whole bunch of blankets, draped a whole bunch of blankets to like make coverage. Now the map just shows a bunch of beds stuck together, so that you know like what's going on. But mm. uh, yeah, and what's the own success been to do? Oh, well, we're, we're looking. He's got it calming down. It's tumbling down. Uh, we were just looking, waiting on the bulwark. Joe? I'm sorry, I'm still looking for some okay. reason. I can't find it. All right. <laughs> I'll look too while you guys are doing yep. your thing. Now, Reflex 11, uh, I wouldn't say that's terrible. Honestly. Like, you just yep. see him kind of stumbling backwards and trying not to get tangled up. He does manage to not have anything like fall right on his head and hurt him. All right. Um, so, so bulwark. The armor covers you so completely that it provides benefits against some damaging effects. On reflex saves to avoid a damaging effect such as a fireball, you add a plus three modifier instead of your dex modifier. Okay. So I'll even boost that to fourteen. And like I said, I won't say you're free and clear, but you certainly like this stuff falls on you and bangs and clatters off your armor, and you are you know dented and knocked around but not hurt. Told you this armor was the wise investment. There you go. Miros, what do you want to do? Okay, um, seeing what the Owen's trying to do here, I'm going to go try to give him a bit more assistance, but do it in more of an effective manner than what he's doing. Okay. And I'll move down here to the uh, to the far south side of him. Okay. And I want to grab some of these sheets here, and I want to give them a good yank. All right. Moving straight through those squares is now difficult terrain because he's collapsed a bunch of this. You'd have to kind of go in a bracket. Okay, different Five, 10, 15, 20. I'm just saying you can get to here with 20. Okay. If that's a single okay. action. If you want to move okay. more, it's going to cost you another action. Can I reach them from where I'm standing? What did you want to do? You wanted to. Clear? I would just want to yank off more blankets. Uh, yeah, you kind of got to get into the mess. All right, can I move half the distance then? Oh, you can you can move like 10 feet in, which is a full yeah. move for you. Like So you just kind of trample in there. Anyway, yeah. you can start yanking here, or if you want to just full your movement, you can go right in like here or up in here, you know, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, right there, right beside Theo in there, just south of him. Right here. Right there? No, right here. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yep. All right, right there. Yep. And give a, give a good yank. Okay. I'm assuming a strength check is in order. Oh, uh, yeah. But right. your, your ripping drapery is a little easier. And also, he's collapsed a whole bunch of this, so... All right. Yee. So that should be a 16. Yep. 16. Hey. What's going on here? We don't know. Huh. Right now we're being bullies and wrecking a blanket fortress. Right. Wrecking a tree fort. Oh, what's that? Well, I got to tell you. Um... When identifying a creature, I believe you have to make a recall. But I'll tell you what you guys see. A Me. large, furry, scraggly, humanoid creature with big flappy ears. It stands much taller than you guys. And I have a picture. Because I have a name, you know. Well, from what we can see in the abbreviated name, it says me. Me. That's you guys, not me. You guys see this. Stand up mad. A shaggy, hyena, goblinish, muscled creature. Muscled? Just because of its proportionate size. Now, um, I believe the new version of this creature is actually considered medium-sized as opposed to large size. So these things, if you figure out what it is, probably, you know, you won't go big. Anyway, I'm sure good old Dahlgren will start shouting, Oh no, it's this. It's not a dragon, but, you know. <clears throat> so, Miros. You yank. Nature check. You what yank. is it? Uh, yank it. Society check? Oh, not, a, not nature? That's uh, not an animal. Oh, I'm it's just a, guessing. It's Sorry. something. No, no, that's good. 
It's not bad, but you can tell with a nature check that this is not a wild animal. It wears clothes, it wields weapons. That's signs of a society, so it would be a society check. Would okay. be at the top of my head. No, no, fair enough. Uh, that's a four. All wild right. animal. I just don't know what it is. Okay. I got a 21. Okay. Oh. Elbrick? 16? Yep. Okay, so uh, the first image, wild, crazy animal somehow wielding a knife, right? This is what stands up. This is what Miros perceives. You guys know that's a bugbear, and you see this. Call, oh. it, call it a dwarven hatred thing. Okay. The, the first one is what actually stands before you. But for shits and giggles, <laughs> the official beast dairy, now that you've ID'd it, you know, this is what stands before you. The difference between the shaggy, rattling, patchwork cloth, nasty dagger holding bugbear and the epic female muscle clad, greatsword wielding, armor wielding, um, monk foot wrapped female bugbear, because it's a bugbear in two or three, you know this, it's quite a difference. Quite a difference. Yeah, <laughs> no, I just, one I feel sorry for. Okay, it um, tries to make some kind of reflex or fortitude, so it does not get you know flattened in here. Um, so I'm just going to pull up the character here. And, Please fail and make a reflex. Fifteen. Okay, so it you know it starts shifting, breaking. Here's you guys coming. It gets ready. It readies weapons. It's ready to charge. And then all of a sudden my wall moves and it's like, oh crap, you know, kind of moves out of position and now it's jumping around in here trying to avoid. So it does get b beaten and badgered like you, but does manage to, ref you know, with a 15, not really get, you know, take any substantial damage. And it's pissed. Hmm. So what do I do? Uh, do I have one action left? Yes, you do. But, ah. but one hmm. movement, right? Yeah, a second movement and a snatch, so you're actually done. Two movements? Well, you, you did one move, right, to get around. You yeah. Did a second move to get in position. Okay. You did a yeah, third action cool. to snatch. Technically, you're up to four because I let you have the um, the action to well, recall. I misunderstood. I thought it was a movement, but cool, yeah. cool. Yeah. Sorry, my bad. Anyway, um, so when it comes around to your turn, I'm gonna have you all beach, all beach, all burn, an action to recall and gain this knowledge I just gave you. Okay. It, is a, it is a bugbear. But you can ask the DM now, tell me about bugbears. What do I know? And I'll, we'll go back to your roles and go, well, you know this much. Strengths, weaknesses, blah. So it is worth burning the action because, you know, strengths and weaknesses are forthcoming. So I, on your turn, dodge betting my fort is collapsing. I'm pissed. On my turn, <clears throat> I would like, is there an escape skill? Joe, yeah, like, how can I do escape? Probably a reflex save, but is there any kind of escaping? Athletics, maybe. Athletics, yeah, yeah, athletics. Let's just uh, <clears throat> push this crap off of me and get stuff out of the way with a 14. So I get, you know, clear. First, I do the damage. I use a single action to get clear. I have two left. I've already ready the weapon. Uh, I would like to charge, but you guys foiled that because I'm stuck in difficult terrain. So basically, now I'm kind of face to face with Theon, who's got, you know, framing me with two bread frames leaning this way, and I'm pushed back a little bit, and Miros, who's revealed the side. So I'm going to exit at the back that I said fell as a single move. And Miros, do you have attack of opportunity? Theon, do you have attack of opportunity? Because I'm going to try and like run around the back and come around this way and attack the closest dwarf, which is Miros. No I attack of opportunity for me. Okay, Theon? <clears throat> yeah. You do, you do. Okay, now I have cover because of all this crap, but you do get attack of opportunity as I just, you know, jump away out of your zone there. Okay. Let me click on my combat. Okay, now let's talk about targeting. Let's assume that I can click the master target up here and drop everyone's target right on top of this single creature so that we don't have any trouble later. Now, this gives you guys the option of instead of like, you had so much fun picking up dice and dropping them on my head. And what did that get you? One, 20, one, 20, one, 20. So now what I suggest you guys do, as received an email from me as I questioned Fantasy Grounds about it, is they have built in an actual organic dice rolling system where you twitch the mouse in a certain direction and you get a real roll feel. So if you scoop up 
by clicking singly and holding your mouse button down on your weapon, that pointer becomes a hand that grasps and you should be able to just move it over to the chat window and make a throw motion and it'll throw dice naturally. But it will target me and it will be the proper weapon because you're grabbing the right attack. Do you follow me? Yeah. Let's have it. Does a 22 hit? I got a 12 and you didn't target me. Why is that? I don't know. You have me? Oh, maybe because I closed the combat track? Huh. No say. I don't know. It might be because I actually, actually closed the combat tracker. That'd be my Let guess. me go through my... Oh, wait. That should only targeting be Targeting the, the goblinoid. I've got Theo and targeting the goblinoid. Yep. Did anyway. you did you just roll a raw dice or did you hit your attack button, Frank? Oh, uh, I thought he said grab the, the oh, die roller. No, no, like go go to your character sheet. Sorry. Oh, okay. okay. Go, go to your character sheet. Right. right. I'm there. Right. Go to your actions. Yep. Then you've got I'm your there. three numbers with three gold dice. Okay, I'm on combat. Right. Uh, go action three. tab at the bottom. Actions. There we go. Got right. It. So your first uh, great axe oh, okay. gold dice is a is a little gold dice with a plus ten, and as soon as you hover your mouse near it, it becomes a hand, right? And as soon as you this, click, go ahead. This may still have magic weapon put on the character that's probably gone by now. Oh, oh thank, yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, how did we do? Very that? muchly gone by now. Because uh, two die twelve plus five sounds gross. Yeah. So how so do we mod I, that? I don't, I don't know how to undo that. A good question. I think I might have just put it in here. Might have just uh, modded it for you. Yeah. Oh. I don't know what that did. Okay. Sorry, that's me. Nope, now okay. there's three. Okay, they don't go away. <laughs> I'm just adding <laughs> dice. One second. I... Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, crap. Now your your axe is gone. Okay. Well, this is touchy. <clears throat> you have your great axe. It does not have damage. Surely we can insert damage. Let's add some damage. Yes, we can. Okay, back on track. A single D12, right? No A single D12. No bonuses. Yes. It runs no off bonus. of strength, right? Yep. And so that should be 22. I don't know if I put my um, proficiency in here. It should be. No, it's already there. You're an expert with uh, your great axe? Yeah. Because as opposed to train? I don't know. How'd you get to expert? You're asking me like I know how to play this game. Joe, help us out here. <laughs> Why does a fighter have I'm not e? looking at his character sheet. I have no idea. Based on what his, his class is being a fighter. Uh, weapons. Expert in simple. Expert in uh, martial weapons. Trained in advanced. Expert in unarmed attack. That's a fighter. Got class. it. Oh. Thank you. Okay. That explains yep. that. Okay. Now we've got you all... Uh, easily fixed. Uh, yeah, sure. Great. Uh -huh. awesome. okay. All right. So armor class 22. Okay. Uh, well, I have one last question. Does a great axe still crit on a times three? No. 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 Okay. No, now they do different things. Right. Well, I do have a crit deck in the mail coming. Paizo, I bought yeah. it. Paizo's mailing it to me. Can't wait to get here. And we'll have all kinds of interesting crit things to happen for you guys to chop off heads. Is, is that a crit? Nice. Nope. I'm just yeah. saying. Uh, anyway, so backing out all of this, did right. we finally get some kind of proper roll from you? Yeah. No. 12 plus 10, 22. Okay. Uh, no, not a crit, but it does hit. Yeah. So damage from you, and, if you just double click in the damage there. Uh, 10 plus 5. Okay. Are you picking or up plus... the D10 or are you clicking on where it says your damage on your dice? No, nope, I just throw a raw die out there because I didn't want to mess with anything and just nope. get the game going. Okay. Yeah, um, next time, if you click on your guy, uh -huh. it's faster because now I have to stop and mod the actual damage manually. So it's fast on one end but slow on the other. But like I said, if you can keep your character sheet up during battle and click appropriately on the damage on the whatever, this is one of... Um, the great advantages of this because it'll automatically do the damage for me and I'm not doing what I'm doing now called stalling 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 <laughs> as I add your 10 wounds there we go all right <clears throat> so it should be 15 wounds 15 okay yes or 14 excuse me 14 all right damn it <laughs> Elbrick, you're up 
Hey. What do you want to do, Al? I will hold my hand forth. Well, first I'll recall using the roll. Um, what do I know about uh, this creature? What do we know? Well, I'm the, so with a sixteen. I'm so glad you asked. What do we know about bugbears? Well, um, you want to keep them pinned down. Don't give this creature movement because if it gets striding ten feet, they're really good at grappling and 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 mauling and throwing, like getting in there and charging. And you know, basically, it's like the the goblin version of the Owen. If they get this thing gets up to speed, it will do a lot worse to you than just standing there whacking away. Okay. Okay. Um, carries a bastard sword, punches with fists, has you know javelins. Um, it likes bushwhacking people, like ambushes, and then overrunning you with stealth and strength, as opposed to like you guys flushed it out. So instinctively, even though Frank didn't know, his character knew to rattle that cage was a good move. Um, sorry, what was your roll? To for perceiving, or sorry for sixteen. Recrop? For sixteen, I'll also tell you that these things have dark vision and imprecise scent. See in the dark and have a good 30 feet of smell yeah okay so when you guys came in within 30 feet what well, is that smell but all the noise you made I'm not that worried <laughs> so moving on right. that's that's so, what you know and two actions left i sing a little song i do a little dance i point my finger and the ray of frost projects from it Okay. I will happily take a miss. Plus, uh, plus one AC bonus for your two allies you got to shoot through to get to me. Well, it's a miss anyway. Okay. Uh, action left. What do you want to do? By the way, I figured out. No, that's my three actions. It's a two action spell. Okay. So I'm done. I okay. pay, but I figured out how to cast spells so that they cast the spells. See that? You see that? Sounds good you to see me. It there. Fancy. Good. Sounds good to me. Okay. Dolgren will use society to recall as a single action and then just start spouting off out loud everything that's in Albrecht's head to you guys so that everyone knows. It can smell you. Don't let it get moving. You know, Dolgren, you know, the bard um, recalls and starts, you know, just talking about everything it can do. And he moves into a better position to possibly help. And that's him. So now we all know what Al knows, just in case you didn't make your rolls. Okay. Which means, coming back to you guys, you don't have to spend an action. Because as you're trying to recall, going, what do I know about this? Before the round end, Dahlgren just starts spitting it out. Bump, 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 bump. Right. That's right. You remember Theo? Oh, yeah. Right. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Thea, it's your go. All right. So, is this five feet to there or is that 10 feet because of difficult terrain exactly okay so there's 10 mm -hmm. 15 that's yep. one move that's right 20. there's a second movement <clears throat> and i will attack okay so i don't know how to target this creature hey, you're already targeted thanks to me so like i said okay. if you just pull up your character sheet and grab the gold dice beside your first attack it should do everything automatically does a 16 hit read underneath why it does it Ooh, says it misses. It says attack at Theon. At Theon. Miss. At Theon. Why are you attacking himself. yourself? That's weird. I don't know. I missed <laughs> me. <laughs> you can't keep a good dwarf down. I swear, like I'm looking right at it. You've got the goblin in your target. Hmm. I mean, when you when you um, hover your mouse over your character, it should immediately draw a line in white to your intended target. It and, does. And talk Let's about see? the feet. Hang on, let me move there. Yep, it does. Look at that. Oh, five feet. No, ten feet. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. Thank, you, thank you, Fancy Grounds. Anyway, so move up, a swing, a miss, and you want to go again? Uh, that was two movements to get there. Oh, so right. one, two. And you're done. Okay. Miros, it is your turn, sir. I, I just like to slip into my mountain stance. 
first time I've used this in the sim entire campaign. Oh, do tell. I was lining up here so I could exposit all the fun fancies that come with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, yeah, yeah. So, straight from the book there, it takes one action to do it. It's a monk stance. And uh, you enter a stance of impla implacable mountain, a technique first discovered by dwarven monks, like yours truly, allowing you to strike with the weight of an avalanche. Only the strikes you make are a falling stone or unnumbered attacks. These deal 1d8 bludgeon and damage and are of the brawling group and have the forceful, non-lethal, and unarmed traits. While in mountain stance, you gain a plus four bonus to AC and a plus four circumstance bonus to any defenses against being shoved trip. However, your dexterity modifier cap to your AC is that of a zero. I mean, you don't have your dex to your AC and your speeds are all reduced by five feet. So you're a mountain stance, but you can still move around. I can. I'll bite slow. I prefer to think the term is steady. Okay. Uh, mountain stance is, hmm, it's here, but it's, the benefits are not listed. That's strange. That's pretty cool. It is very cool. So without dex, looking at your skill, your abilities here, your AC is going to go down, but it's going to come back up because of the stance. So essentially I get a net of plus two. I'd have an AC of 19. Right. And we don't have a touch AC, flat footed AC. Now there is being flat footed. But they don't have a touch flat-footed AC. Is that correct, Joe? That is correct, sir. Okay. So, we'll just have to keep this in mind for moderations until we can fandangle the math on the... Um, well, what I can do here for you is I'm just seeing if there's a... If we go into combat, right, I can give you... This would be like an armor bonus. Yay. Okay, so I can literally give you a plus four armor bonus and then i can literally switch out your uh switch out your decks for something that doesn't give you a bonus like intelligence and ah. your 17 becomes 19 like you said a net of plus two sweet and you're good to go excellent just remind and me to you know <laughs> put yes. that back later so is there like a round timer like we're going ting 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 or no it's until i determine myself to go to another stance okay so no decks so that's no. gonna that's gonna affect your reflex, right? To my AC. Oh, to your AC, but okay. And is there any other downside to this? No, it's all positives. But oh, I five the... feet slower, but right. five feet more steady. I like to think. Okay. Very cool. All right. And and now for my second action, I like to give him a flurry of buttons. Okay. Bring on the feet. All right. Oh, getting used to the buttons. Inventory, abilities. Where's my Baton's button? Uh, Baton. Down the bottom in actions. There's a tab oh, on the side. There we go. I give him a couple of falling stone strikes. So a flurry of Baton's. Okay. So one action, two attacks. Go ahead. First attack. 19. And that says it hits. And All right. Click on the damage beside it, and it'll automatically calculate. Eight points of damage. Yep, and I drop to heavily beaten. Oh, subdual. Always subdual. Okay. Right. Second, Batons. Twenty, not natural. Do you have a way to track your damage? So when it drops to zero, they're just unconscious, but could be woken and instantly have, you know, dun dun dun, dun medicine check. We have one hit point. Well, no, actually, the non-lethal, you know, uh, hospitalized. We'll look more into that. But um, while we have Joe, with nothing better to do, <laughs> some intricacies on uh, yeah, non-lethal, right? Um, Five points. Okay, so you hit him twice, hit it twice, and it's getting beaten up pretty badly. It takes hits and it reacts like a person does. You hit it in the oh. soft belly, yeah. and this thing makes a sort of shriek, and you know backs up a bit, and you clip it in the shoulder to punch, and you know on and on you go. Yes, sir. One more. Okay. One more bitten for the roads. 
Can you use Flurry of Blows twice in a round? No, I can't. It's just a straight attack, though. Okay, so you, can, you have a follow-up blast. Yeah. Now, uh, the two attacks is one action. You have to go down the line with the bonuses, though, don't have you? Have been. Yeah, okay. So your third is your third one. Yeah, so gotcha. it is my least likely to hit. Yep. No, not checking your honesty, just trying to educate the audience and reaffirm mm -hmm. my own knowledge lacking. Yeah, his, so his next attack would be at a minus five, not at a minus ten, because technically Flurry of Blows is one attack. It's one action. Even though it's two, it's classified as one. I thought he just, he still had to go down the line for the attack values. He just did have to burn so actions. Flurry of Blows yeah. is one. Even though he has two attacks, it's classified as one. So then his next attack is at minus five instead of minus ten. Well, so, actually, they're agile, so they're minus fours. Yeah, well, Sorry. So not yeah. only do you, not only is it energy saving, as in like two punches are only a single action instead of two in the economy, he gets full attack bonus for both. Yeah. To my, okay. To my understanding, because I took a, I had a plus seven on my first attack, and then I took a plus three on my second attack, assuming that I went down by four. You still hit. You, no, no, but I'm just for our education and moving forward. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I did that incorrectly then, Joe? Yeah, yeah the next time it's... Whatever, it should have been plus seven, plus seven, then you yeah, go down. Whatever, when, whenever you decide to use Flurry of Blows, either your first attack, second attack, or third attack, then you do two attacks at, at the same whatever, whatever penalty or whatever bonus. And yeah, it's pretty gross. Yeah, so like say you led with a gra grab, right? And then you right. start flurrying him, but you have a hold of him. It would be the second attack modifier. I think that's what he's getting at, you know. Or if you were, if you were forced to jump, you right? always want to open with the flurry if you can, because then you get your highest. Okay. Right. Okay. Cool. Right. I like this learning. It's pretty wicked. <laughs> well, you know, we we, we do I... get things wrong from time to time, and if we have this buggered, someone will dig up. But on site so we're not arguing and like i said he's doing me a favor like what is this rules lawyer well he's not playing ladies and gentlemen he's there to help me because someone would probably think that an actual player character would be biased and always kind of like oh yeah sure dm i'm pretty sure that blah, blah right so again thank you for joe gibson for taking the time to show up and just painfully watch us play and not get to right. play himself but you will see him on sunday nights and our new starfinder game under rob and our world of rotram under jared and simply second edition so a flurry and now only a slightly lower modifier for your last beating miros take it away Still, no, it's beaten oh it's 11. uh that's a miss yes it and, was a stern fist and, don't you do it again and now it's my turn you guys have had a very solid open to a party killer i mean <clears throat> to a single monster and she starts swearing vehemently in goblin i don't think anyone really speaks it and since I'm, you are doing the most damage and you are still technically the closest she comes down now the picture shows a dagger but the character is set up with the generic bastard sword so two-handed big whack and here it comes miros your own beaten 14 plus 10 is 24 attack and hit and the damage. Yeah, yeah, that touches me. Two and four is six damaging anvil moderately. My tenders! Ouch. Um, but since I'm here and I'm stoically standing, I'm just going to unload. However, this character I don't think has... Let me just double check with the actions. Um, I don't think I have the option. I have to manually put in the negatives so uh it's not a light weapon it's huge so i'm guessing the negative five is about to apply so at the bottom of the screen here there's a way that anyone even you be honest can adjust so with a negative five adjustment putting in manually and whacking again with the sword a miss she brings it around over her head and comes down and this time you stoically mountain clip off the side of your shoulder Pating, and a third at negative ten. But I'll take it. Natural twenty oh. hits Miros for a critical. Oh, isn't that interesting? Critical oh, damage. Yeah. Critical damage. I get to double my damage, right? 
Oh, wait. Wait, Joe's shaking his head. No. Yes, your natural 20? Yep. Add your modifiers. Does that beat his armor class by 10 to become? No, it would be 10, which doesn't crit, but the 20 makes it a regular hit. It makes it a regular hit, but it doesn't crit. Right. So I'm guessing this is a technical glitch that it saw the attack roll 20 and it goes, yay, critical. Unless once again, because we have really buggered up the crit rules. <laughs> no, but that's because you still have to, to get a critical, even though of 20 yeah. is a hit. So if it changes it from a success to a critical success, like all other rolls. Uh, yeah. Actually, it is worded like this. <clears throat> it says, if you roll a natural 20, the number on the dice is 20, or if the result of your attack exceeds the target's AAC by 10, you achieve a critical ah, success, okay. also known as a critical hit. Right. Um, Ooh, so it is double damage. Ooh, it's twice as easy to crit now. Yeah. Right. Kind of. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, uh, what what type of weapon are they using? A bastard, bastard sword, sword two-handed. Uh, one-handed, two-handed, doesn't matter anymore. Uh, actually, two-handed D12, one-handed D8. And I've been de dealing out oh, the D8. Okay. So as I said before, she swings and she does the D8, two hands it over her head and misses. And then continuing the momentum with two hands, just uh, trying to get that good old D12. Uh, that's going to leave a mark. That That is. But, you know, if I went easy on you guys, especially without your cleric, well. So uh, I can double my strength, but not magic, I believe. So with a plus four, so basically a plus eight adjust adjustment because I am doubling my strength. I will now raw roll 2d12 raw. And here's 25 points oh total God. damage as he comes down and she, she buries her sword two-handed down into your collar. Don't. How you feeling? How you feel about that? How are we doing? I find the chest hairs took the majority of it, but I lost so many. I got a clean shaven. I only have you at like six wounds. Why did that not go in? Oh, right, because I didn't target you. I rolled random. Because the chest hairs deflected it. So you have six points of damage, but you rested overnight. And a medicine check, I'm sure, from Dahlgren would have cleared that right up. So starting you at full health, okay, with your 22. First, I did how much? Where was where was my last hit here? Six, 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 and now twenty-five for a total of thirty-one. Yeah, in a single round. Who's no getting... single hit? Sorry, single hit, not single round. Yeah, I hit you twice. twice. Single round. You got hit twice. <laughs> the so first one just parted the chest hair. Yes, right. It was a comb. <laughs> yeah, first a comb right to one side, leaving a scratch, and now. Ah, there it is. And plunge. You're at negative nine hit points, but that doesn't matter. You fall over. Uh, Al? I believe that's your cue. My cue for what? No! <laughs> Why, Miaros? Second time in one campaign, right? Um, oh, God, please tell me that left his head intact at least. Christ Almighty, his grandmother will never forgive me if you can't recognize her own grandson at this funeral. Who you might, can, you, can, you, can you dig me up a dwarven deity? Tolgren Almighty? I'm trying to say a character here. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tolg? By the grace of Tolgren. Oh, that looks like it hurt, lad. Lad? <laughs> it actually is Al's turn. So Al, besides all the uh, dramatic. <clears throat> I will not have any of that. Let me tell you. So what are you going to do? So, about it? I'm going to spend my entire round unleashing magic missiles into the beastie. Do, 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 do. And, plus one. and I'm going to dig up a condition. <laughs> See what we got here. Dead? No, he's not dead. It's uh, help me out here, Joe. It's dying, but uh, okay. It's not how here. much damage did he take? He's at negative nine. No, how much? Oh, damage 20, 25 more than his total hit points in a single hit. That's 
death for massive damage. That has you can changed. spend a hero, a hero point. Point. yeah, avoid death. I, that, that I'm, I'm trying to read on that. <laughs> <As much laughs> as <I can. laughs> now, don't spoil it. Well, the hero points will come spitting out of Ryan when he comes I'm back so to his turn, right? Wiggling so, yeah. my fingers in a magical fashion, I fire three bolts okay. of magic missile into that bitch. Uh, first one does three damage, second one does two, and the last one does four for a grand total of eight damage. Oh, guess what? She double handed, sorry, single handed parts the chest hair, swings over the head, and he counters, and then she plunges through. And in disbelief, you see Miros look down, clutch the sword, look at her defiantly. Is he going to pull it out with a hero point? Is he going to edge up to get in that last pummel? And then all of a sudden, flying over his head as he just kind of like, he, he, he hears no. And the bugbear sees a smile and he just tilts his head to one side. Pops, perhaps from exhaustion, perhaps it's a dead man stare. But over that shoulder comes those missiles and hits her. One, two in the eyes, one up the mouth, and a big scorch mark appears in the back of her black fur. And she falls to the ground, leaving Miros holding her sword by the chest for her. (laughs) Holding? Yeah, (coughs) holding the sword for her with his chest. (coughs) You you see that? I totally took the sword right out of her hand. (coughs) Dahlgren's turn. Sorry, Albrecht. That you did, lad. Albrecht, you did. That's my turn. That's your turn. Albrecht, right? Dahlgren sees the combat fall and runs up. Five... The next one is 15, 20. That's one move. Oh, wait. I just got to get to Meryl's. I'm running to the bad guy. Sorry. Let's try that again. (laughs) 5, 10, uh, 20. So uh, still a single move to jump into the debris. And I believe he would immediately try a medicine check, you know, to try and heal you. Um, Now, dead is dead. But he needs to know, you know, if he can help at all. Uh, so that's Dahlgren. He, you know, he jumps on Miros and tries to, you know, tries to help. It is Theon's turn. And Miros is, you know. Go ahead, Miros. I interrupted I've, your awesome speech. I've got my axe over my head and I'm... Ah! He, he's got the handle of this thing sticking out of his chest. Mm-hmm. That's not what you're supposed to do. Laddie. Laddie. Well, shit, are you dead? kind of pause mid combat okay there's this horrible horrible pause and dahlgren does a medicine check he puts one hand on the guy's shoulder and the skin in his back isn't pierced but pushed way out in a point kind of like when you step on a nail in the kid and it just kind of oh. tense the top of your foot his entire <laughs> back but at one it's on an angle it's not through the spine not through the pillar of life no sideways and just poking out like a good six inches just stretching that skin the, the chest hair recedes a bit and theon asks him are you dead miros well let's talk to ryan first because miros is dead ryan what do you want to do blow my hero points <laughs> yeah, <no kidding. laughs> all of them right yeah 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 theon you can see this dahlgren is looking down shaking his head at you like no you know he's gone Elbrick is back there on his knees again. No! And Muros's eyes flare open and he starts pulling the sword out of his chest with his hands while saying again to Theros, coughing up blood into his own beard. <laughs> Took the sword right out of her hands. <laughs> Stupid she. Didn't even hold on to her blade. And he's just <laughs> he's coughing, coughing up all kinds of blood. Holy crap. My, li- my liver. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's not moving. Albrick, it's your turn. No. Yeah. What? <laughs> Cut off. Were Dol- you faking it? I'll even go as far to say Dahlgren switches from medicine to seeing this miracle, and as soon as that sword is out, he immediately starts casting what, medis- what medical soothe he has 
Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. What do we got here? Where's my actions? Spell, 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 spell. Soothe. Uh, two ca two somatic and uh, two actions somatic and verbal. Thirty feet. One willing living creature. Do you accept the terms of this agreement? I just torch me and get it off over with there. Do you, do you, do you accept my? Well, it's it's bardic occult magic. So do you do you accept this non deity healing? You know. I grace your mind. I boost your mental defenses and heal your wounds. You immediately grant, you regain 1d10 plus 4 hit points. Ryan, please roll d10 and modify by a plus 4. I'm not being blamed. And you cast a spell. 6 points. You get 6 points back and for 1 minute you actually get a plus 2 on saves against mental effects for a whole minute beyond this casting. Fair. Fair. Now, if he's at uh, now, run me through this, Joe. If he's at negative nine, does it matter? Do you ever go beyond zero? Uh, well, that's uh, when when you start dying. Yeah. I when you hit zero or lower. Right. Go on. <laughs> you, get your, you get die. You get your lovely dying condition. Right. I dying one, and then two, three. When you hit four, you die. You, that's it. You're done. Okay. So. Now, but there was the massive damage, which just really took him to death. Yeah, which is double your maximum hit points in one hit. Oh, double your maximum. Then you're done. Oh, Joe killed yeah. you. I didn't. Apparently, you weren't really dead. Well, you're still <laughs> dying. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you would have needed like 44 hit points, not 25. So we didn't just jump right to death, right? So he's in the negative nine, right? Which is dying one. Is it dying one? There's no additional because for every five or something or beyond. Is uh, it dying? Not, I'm. I'm reading and I'm, I'm pretty sure it's yeah there's no extra so it's dying too right if if you die on a crit I'm even gonna say it's probably de death too because it was a crit that brought him here maybe uh, because basically it's just dying yeah you're dying one and then on his turn yeah he gets to try and recover oh it's a timer thing dying one nope dying two nope dying three it's like you have four chances to die, not die Okay, yeah, or, but it's it's all based on die rolls too, right? So. Right. So sitting sitting at dying one, one. Yes. Okay, you technically, because we screwed up, Ryan, don't have to burn this hero point. You didn't. I yeah. didn't out flatten you with fifty <laughs> hit points. You no, can no. make you can make a con roll. No, no, that's cool. I, I, I that's canon. That's I've voiced it out. I've thrown it to the others. Yeah, because you know exactly. I, I was going to take away that epic. No hero point. No pulling the sword. No epic speech, no, right? No, no, we're sticking with this. And to be honest. <laughs> I do kind of like like yanking Albrecht's chain every now and then. <laughs> Seeing him cry like a little girl really gets me going some days. So, um, using a hero point not to die, that brings him to like a single point? Or Sorry. just brings him... When you use a hero point or when you make your con roll and, you know, extinguish the dying one, where does it leave you? At zero but awake? Depending on how you want to... If you roll to get out of your dying one, then you become stable at zero. He used the hero point. If you use hero point, you go back to one hit point and you can do whatever you want. Right. So you have one hit back point. on your feet. Yeah. yeah. Well, here's <laughs> the <laughs> thing. Ha -ha! You yeah, have that belongs points, to me. Then, right? but, <laughs> but now you have that one, right? Yeah. As opposed to zero. Now Dahlgren heals you another six. So you actually have seven. C. Okay. Now, question is, I just used magic on him. Can I actually do a medicine check and just keep the love coming? I mean, I I'm already so. behind him, so I can <laughs> use Aerith's methods. But you have to remember that doing medicine check is a skill check. Yep. Good shot. We all sit down and hopefully don't get attacked for 10 minutes. The wounded condition? Uh, yes. I, <laughs> after you... I believe Soothe removes that, though. Yeah. I think that's the thing with Soothe that's so awesome because it gets rid of wounded condition or it soothes you moves you up a, a step on the uh, track step up there yeah. because well he was dying, like dying. <laughs> yeah he was i know it's just well but he spent his hero point to basically not be dying and have one hit point okay so well, then he uh, then he casts soothe let me just come back to the spell here real quick where did dolgren go the sword goes in he pulled it out so fast things just like closed back up yeah. No, the, nope, chest, nope, the, nope, chest, nope, nope. the chest tear stitches, you know, <laughs> he's holding himself together like that, like that medical stapler. He's the More chest tear. regeneration. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, the chest tear is staining, but you know, it's uh, okay. Sorry, going back into soothe. 
Uh, grace the target's mind, boosting men mental defenses Dude, and healing Dude, you just moves. got yourself a scar like okay. Sagat from Street Fighter II. Does, no, does not... <laughs> Dude, origin stories! Al does not say anything about moving you up a track. He gets hit points, he gets a bonus to men's... Doesn't? Uh, no. I thought that there no. was a... I think that's a different spell he cast earlier. All right, what's oh. the wounds entail? So you're at seven. Yeah. Hit points. Okay. Okay. But you're wounded. You and are. wounded, which is, what's that uh, status? Uh, that's the fantasy grounds thing where you're like, you're healthy, you have most of your points. You're wounded, you're in the, you know, yellow alert, another chunk in your third. I think it breaks your hit points into thirds and just kind of says, okay, you know, you're in the top two thirds. Beyond that, you're healthy. You're still good. You know, just a flesh wound. You get Ooh. into the middle, right? I think it's just kind of a green, yellow, red. Uh oh. You know, right. kind so of like a basic indicator. I don't status. think this is in the core book kind of thing because oh, in the core. With wounded. A... Okay. Uh, anytime you're seriously injured during a fight. Yep. And you lose the dying condition, uh, yep. like Ryan did, you oh, become he's... wounded. Oh, he's what? baggage. Ah, sorry. <laughs> if, you are, if you are wounded, yep. then your condition can increase or decrease. Depending on what you do. Oh. The wounded condition ends if someone successfully restores hit points to you with treat wounds, or if you re sorry, restore to full hit points and rest for ten minutes. Okay, treat wounds, as in also like magic? Or medical. Yeah. Okay. Well, magic should do it, but just in case we're wrong, if you guys want to sit down for ten minutes, Dahlgren will Oh, for sure. <laughs> <You know. laughs> For yeah. sure, and yeah. I mean it's going to take at least ten minutes to properly search the corpse. Yeah, I mean, I mean he's he's combing and he's fighting the chest hair stitching, but he's got to get into the wound there. But you know, it takes a while. Um. Well, um. I'm quickly curious. Is she shouldn't be dead because I did do some dual damage. Well, because you're a patient, you just come back from life. How about I work on you? And well, uh, no, yeah. no, that's cool. But. Yeah. Now, if you want to like sit there and stare at her and oh, I'm just curious, moves. actually, Joe, uh, Joe, for a uh, man who rule manages the rules, um, does subdual work like it used to in Pathfinders? Can't hear you, Joe. Wait, oh, sorry. So it's still a little gray. Okay. On what I'm being able to read on it, I will but, aid on that medicine check too. By but the way. right now, okay. as I'm reading more on heroic recovery. I won't. Uh, if you spent a hero point or all your hero points to remove your dying effect. Which I did both. Yeah, you return to one hit point. Hooray! And you also become a real gain, boy. You also do not gain the wounded condition. Oh. oh, yay. Sorry, it doesn't do what? You do not gain wounded condition if you use your hero points to be alive. Okay. If you use magical healing, then you get the wounded or or didn't Medicine. penetrate. It actually stretched the skin from the front through to the back. <laughs> it never <laughs> Flexi stone stance. He's hurt. It's Don't get me wrong. Penetra pushed a few organs out of the way on the way through, but Oh, just just pushing through the hair and poking a rib and it's a rib sticking at the back and it just, you know, hinges back into place. Oh, lost that well, it's, it's not like you know the old Superman thing where you you're, there is no scar or anything, but yeah, you know. Yeah. Wow. yeah. No, I totally want there to be a bit of scar. I think we're starting to something here too, where like I have a close death with, every other episode. Like, I know like, <laughs> with your with your luck and rolls, fuck it, just leave it in. Just walk around with this thing sticking out of your chest. Here, <laughs> yeah, like, ah. who needs a scar? I still have the original tink, battle tink, damage. Tink. Ha ha! <laughs> hey, who's going to mess around with me if I'm walking around with a sword sticking out of my chest? That's like a Dark Souls boss fight. Well, the clerics will be coming at you. Turn, turn. <laughs> <laughs> we lay this dwarf to rest. Why are your own kind attacking you with spells of healing? We'll just solidify that in there. And they're trying to turn you with like positive energy. No, That's please okay. attack me with more healing spells. I love it. <laughs> well, we thank you for learning alongside us. We still obviously have a lot to learn, but with the combat ending and everyone getting a comb and assisting in the surgery <laughs> that just leaves Theoin's parting words as he says hey are you gonna keep that it could be worth something good night everybody <laughs> good night <laughs>